Hi, Corey Geiger along with Neil Riddell. 24 to 13 win for Penn State over Temple. Neil, really good uh, confidence building win, two in a row now going into uh, the Big Ten play. Yeah, I, I don't know that Temple's a great team, but I thought they played hard. I thought they answered some challenges, uh, particularly early in the game, they avoided the blowout. I, and I'm just impressed with steady progression of Penn State. A lot of the things that they make mistakes a week earlier, whether you're going back to how the defense played against Ohio U or about how the offense handled the red zone against uh, Virginia, the kicking game, things seem to be improving uh, piece by piece. It's interesting because this is uh, this is a, a win and it's a confidence building win. I would disagree with you to the extent that they made a lot of mistakes. They made a lot of penalties. They shot themselves in the foot. This could have been a blowout. I don't think this is a good Temple team. Their court, their passing game, I think, is really weak. But we, we'll give Penn State credit. The defense took control of the game. Uh, but I, I think there, there were still a lot of areas, uh, penalties. Um, well, this is the first game they've had a lot of penalties. Yep. They've been among the least, least penalized teams in the yep. Big Ten. You know, there were a couple calls that were bang, bang calls. But, uh, uh, yeah, definitely. That's an area. They had nine penalties for 100 yards. But the so most obviously, you have to address that. And the most important thing about football is no matter who you play, if you play a great team or a bad team, you got to win and you got to do some things well. 491 yards of offense, 318 yards from Matt McCoy. And this gives them, whether you're playing a good team or a bad team, you've got some confidence now going into the conference schedule. Yeah, you know, your place kicker uh, yep. uh, had a strong game, kicked the field goal, didn't miss an extra point. Um, you know, and that had been an area of concern. But, you know, uh, Matt McGloin, I'm just impressed with, with how he has transitioned to a new coaching staff. He doesn't force things like he used to. Uh, the two interceptions he's had this year have been on deflections. So I think he's really been uh, up in. And McGloin has addressed this, and I think it's a great point because he knows he's the starting quarterback. He doesn't have to try to force things down the field and make big plays to try to you know, prove himself to coaches. He's the guy, and for him, that's beneficial because that lets him know that, hey, he doesn't have to take huge chances and be that gunslinger kind of quarterback. Absolutely, and uh, Ryan said at one point this year he wished he had him for another couple sure. of years. I think you're starting to see a higher upside with him than maybe we saw before. And how amazing is that? Because here, I know Matt McCoy hates the former walk-on label, but you had Paul Jones, you had Rob Bolden come in, and here's a kid who's going to be a three-year starter, and I, I've said this before, I think he's the, the single most valuable – player on the team because if something happens to him, I'm not sure where they go. Yeah, and you know, I don't think, I think it's an indictment on the rest of college football. This guy obviously can play. He can play at a high level. He has 30, 31 touchdown passes, 31 or 32 touchdown passes right now. He was a two-year, he was a part-time starter for two years. The career record is only 43. So, I mean, he may break that with one full year as a starter. So I, I think he deserves a lot of credit. And the defense obviously deserves a lot of credit. And again, let us I, I, I don't want to take up much away from the defense. This is not a good Temple offense. They can't throw the ball. And I'm worried about Penn State playing teams that can throw the ball, although there aren't many of them in the Big Ten. But the defense came out, was in total control of the game today. And even when the offense kind of was shooting itself in the foot with some mistakes, the defense had control. Yeah, one thing that's uh, bothered me a little bit about their defensive backs they haven't necessarily given up many long passes, but their corners at times, don't. their ball recognition is, is pretty suspect. There were a number of plays today that uh, I don't think the corner really knew where the ball was. But hey, 24-13 win. Um, Temple had made some strides in, in previous years under Al Golden. I don't think this is as good of a Temple team as we've seen over the last handful of years. And I gotta, I gotta really heavily criticize Steve Adazio for fourth and five at the 43, and you're down. You know, what was it, 14 to 3 at the time? Yeah. And you're punting. Okay. You haven't beaten Penn State since 1941. Bill O'Brien's going for that. You know, I don't understand coaches that don't play to win. I understand keeping your team in the, you know, thinking you have a shot, but to me, Temple should have come in and thrown everything, including the kitchen sink at Penn State, and they didn't. But hey, and we'll go to Illinois next week, and uh, it's not like Illinois is a great team either, so Penn State has a lot of chances. Right, and obviously it would be a lot of motivation for Penn State. Illinois came in here and tried to recruit their players openly. Uh, you know, very questionable move from a conference brother. So uh, I think Penn State would be very motivated. One injury, uh, Michael Zordich went out today. He was having a great game. Um, they thought, you know, afterwards he was kind of joking around. He was walking, but he took a shot on the knee. Yeah, about the that. injuries, boy, they just, uh, that's, continues to be 
be one of the biggest stories because the depth is obviously there. And now we now we get into the conference season. Teams are going to have better talent than these Navies and Temples, and really even in a lot of cases the Ohio's and Virginias. Yeah, although Ohio would be very competitive this week. Absolutely, I, I agree. For Tim Shane, who's uh, filming, we appreciate that. Neil Riddell, Corey Geiger, thanks for tuning in.